Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I am your host, Megan Hardy, and I'm also the founder of Fitness Uncharted, which is a women's health and fitness company that is designed to help women lose stubborn body fat, build lean muscle mass, improve their metabolisms, and also in the business of empowering women by working on their health and fitness goals. So we want to empower women to live their best life basically. So today you guys, we're going to be talking about supplements, what to take and when I've been getting a lot of questions about this recently. So we're going to address it here today. Um, and also I was debating about letting Oreo, my sheep, a doodle puppy dog, um, Oreo McFurry. I was debating about letting her sit in the room with me while I recorded but she started barking at someone outside and I was like, nope, sorry, you lost your privilege. So I just had to kick her out. So sorry, Oreo, maybe one day when she grows up a little bit more, we can have her in the room for the podcast too. But anyway, had to kick her out. So let's talk about supplements. I'm going to get rolling on this because, um, this is probably going to be a little bit longer of an episode already. And so I'm just kind of going to roll through this information. We're not even going to get on uh, to get to cover all topics or all things supplements because we'd be here forever. So today um, I'm going to talk about more so specifically what I have used or what I have maybe recommended for some clients, things like that. Um, but also shout out to our listener, Dana Schott, who requested this topic specifically, also Kimberly Tips and a few others in our free uh, Fitness Uncharted Facebook group. A lot of women chiming in, wanting to know more about supplements. Um, so this is for you guys. So thanks for your requests. Um, if you ever have any requests for future episodes, please feel free to message me on social media. My handles are in the show notes and I actually, um, will take those requests to heart and probably put them into a future episode. So feel free to ask away. Um, but today we're going to be talking about supplements, you know, what to take when, what is needed, you know, versus like, what is going to be a waste of money, right? Like we've all probably taken some supplements and like kind of wondered, is this working? Is this a royal waste of my money? Am I just peeing it out? Is this not what my, my body needs? You know, everyone kind of swears by different supplements, but everyone's bodies are so different too. And what we need is can be so different. So Today, I'm going to cover some of the supplements that I personally use, and also we'll talk about um, pre-workouts too. So there are so, 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 so many supplements out there. So if I tried to cover them all in this episode, we'd be here like five hours. Okay. So in respect of time and trying to keep these episodes to closer to 20 to 30 minutes for you guys. I'm just going to talk about the ones that I personally use. And then also some that are most common in the fitness slash workout space. Okay. Uh, so the thing with supplements also that I want to note before we dive in is that they can be a big waste of money. Like if you don't know specifically why you're taking it and you know, if you really need it, it can be a really big waste of money. And also the other thing to note too, is vitamins and minerals and supplements, they work synergistically with each other. And what that really means is like, they need other vitamins and minerals to do their job properly. So like taking standalone supplements without proper nutrition may not actually help or may not actually do what it was intended to do. If you don't have the other micronutrients that your body needs for that supplement to work effectively. And that's why you guys whole food sources are always the way to go first. Like with our clients starting out with our programs, we always start with a whole foods first approach. Like a lot of times people want to, they want to know what are the supplements I need to take for fat loss or what's going to like, give me that edge. And I'm like, Hey, let's start like with the basics first, because nature really knows best and usually actually pairs vitamins and minerals together in food that are, that need to go together. Like for one example is in order for copper to do its job properly, we need adequate levels of vitamin A and beef liver is one food that is actually a, a great food source of both copper and vitamin A. Whereas like if you were just taking a copper or vitamin A supplement, you're just getting the standalone micronutrient. Whereas they actually like need each other to do their job and to work effectively in the body. So, and if you guys are like, what Ew, beef liver, some of y'all are probably super used to beef liver. If you listen to any other more like holistic podcasts or follow anyone more holistic on Instagram, this is probably not new information for you, but 
if you're like, oh my gosh, I am never eating beef liver. That's disgusting. I personally take a beef liver supplement because I know it's got those, it's a bioavailable source of, uh, copper and vitamin A and some of those nutrients. And it's made from nature. So they're paired together. So that's the thing to know is with any supplements you're taking, think about how is it, is it interacting with other foods or other supplements that I'm taking? Cause they work synergistically. Um, so first and foremost, what I want to cover is, um, pre-workouts. Okay. So since this is more so in the fitness space, let's talk about what is a pre-workout, what does it do? And then when should it be used? So pre-workout just refers to a type of dietary supplement that's commonly used before engaging in ex exercise or starting a workout. And it's usually comes like in a powder form, you mix it with water, and then you have your quote unquote pre-workout drink. Um, and pre-workouts are designed to it usually like increase energy, um, improve focus. They'll enhance your endurance. So you might have more endurance during your workout. And then also you'll just have better performance during workouts that those are potential benefits of taking a pre-workout. And the primary purpose of a pre-workout supplement is to give you that energy boost and then improve your endurance during exercise. So that way you basically can last longer. Like I know that's what she said, but, <laughs> but what we want in a workout is to one, have the energy for the workout. If we're dragging butt through the workout, we're not going to get much bang for our buck. And then also if you have more endurance during exercise, you can get an extra rep here or there, you know, an extra five pounds on your deadlift an extra four reps on your squat or whatever it is. And those little, little boosts can help a lot in the long run because that's where progressive overload comes in and you can build more lean muscle mass. If you didn't catch the progressive overload episode, go back and check that out. I won't get into that now. Um, but we talk in detail about progressive overload. So go check that episode out. Um, but what is in a pre-workout? So let's talk about some of the common ingredients. And I just have even a list here to remind me, but, um, so common ingredients, first and foremost is caffeine which we are all familiar with caffeine. I think it boosts energy levels, improves alertness, reduces fatigue. Um, and you guys with this, like if that's what you're looking for and you're looking for something like if you're considering a pre-workout for the sake of boosting energy levels, improving alertness, reducing fatigue, y'all, you can seriously just go have a cup of coffee. Like it's the caffeine that is giving you those benefits like in a pre-workout, right? So you don't necessarily have to have a pre-workout if you're looking for those benefits have a cup of coffee. So that's where this is where it's really important to know why are you taking what you're taking and what is in it that's giving you that effect, right? So caffeine is a big one. Um, and that's where we'll talk more about it here in just a moment, but a lot of pre-workouts have a lot of caffeine. Um, that's why I personally make my own, uh, rendition of a pre-workout. I don't take a typical pre-workout. Um, cause I find they have, there's, it's a lot of caffeine in one sitting, but we'll talk more about that. Um, creatine is the other big, big, big player. Um, and creatine helps with, um, increasing muscle strength and power and endurance. So again, think if you have more muscle strength and power and endurance, you're going to be able to build more muscle, right? And you're going to be able to have more strength for your workout. Uh, beta alanine is another one. Um, that's an amino acid that can actually improve muscular endurance by reducing the buildup of lactic acid during exercise. So, you know, a lot of times people get, uh, hung up or have to stop a workout or an exercise because of that lactic acid buildup. Beta alanine can be your friend because it can help your muscles and your body go the extra mile without that lactic acid buildup. So that's one benefit of beta alanine. Um, and also pre-workouts typically have other amino acids like the branch chain amino acids or BCAAs for short. Um, and those are all important for muscle growth, repair, and recovery. So you're only as good as your recovery, right? Um, and so BCAAs and amino acids can come in really handy for that repair and recovery part of the process. Um, one thing I will say about BCAAs, cause I take these myself outside of a pre-workout, I'll just take them as a standalone supplement one, because they're just yummy and they taste good in my water. Um, 
Also, I find them really great between meals. If you are trying to make sure you're getting plenty of those amino acids, um, as a part of your recovery and meals, they can be really, really helpful for, I will suggest them for some clients who are having like a lot of soreness, um, uh, post-workout or the following day. They can help tremendously with recovery and reducing soreness, but BCAAs are one of those things that you can technically get from whole food sources. Like you don't technically have to supplement with them if you are getting adequate amounts in your protein sources. So, um, but that's another ingredient that is often in pre-workouts, um, nitric oxide boosters are another one as well. They can help widen your blood vessels, um, and increase blood flow to the muscles. And then that also helps improve like nutrient and oxygen delivery. So that's where, like, again, if you're increasing that blood, blood flow, that can be helpful for the muscle. Um, and then also this is where you might get a little more of that pump action happening. Um, citrulline is another one. It enhances exercise performance, um, can also improve blood flow as well, and then may accelerate recovery too. Um, that's citrulline and then betaine can improve exercise performance and muscle protein synthesis. So, um, muscle protein synthesis, you guys is just muscle building. That's what that means. Whenever you hear it is building muscle. So betaine can be helpful for that and also exercise performance. And then with pre-workouts, they also might have some other vitamins and minerals in there as well. So one, one big glaring question is like, who needs a pre-workout? Like, and, and do you need a pre-workout, uh, for an effective workout, right? Some people are like, oh my gosh, am I not going to be able to get a good workout if I don't have a pre-workout or people who have been using pre-workouts for a long, long time, they think they're not gonna be able to get a good workout if they don't take their pre-workout. Um, so supplementation can be helpful for some people, but the effectiveness and the necessity of a pre-workout supplement really does vary from person to person. Um, so like for me personally, like I don't take a traditional pre-workout. I used to not take anything at all. And now I kind of make my own with ingredients that I know, um, I know why I'm taking them and how they can benefit me. But for the longest time I did, I take, took zero pre-workout and I might've just had some caffeine or something for a boost, but did just fine. Um, but it really varies from person to person. Other people swear by the their pre-workouts. So there there's that. Um, but it is important to note that you, you really can achieve a, a workout, uh, a successful workout and a badass workout without relying on pre-workout supplements. And the foundation of a good workout really actually involves three things, proper nutrition, hydration, and sufficient rest. Okay. So proper hydration, proper nutrition, sufficient rest. And a balanced diet, what that's going to look like is, you know, you're going to have adequate carb intake, protein intake, and healthy fats. So you're going to have those macronutrients that your body needs, and then that's going to help provide the necessary energy for your workouts. So like, if you are not fueling your body properly, start there first. Like that's where, again, I tell any of our clients coming in, like, we're not going to jump right to pre-workouts or anything. Like I actually usually don't suggest pre-workouts at all during the program, unless they ask about them. Um, but it's like, let's fuel your body with the proper nutrients that it needs. And because that's going to give you the energy for your workouts. And that's also going to help with recovery. Two other things that help with that too, is staying hydrated and well-rested. They play a vital role in optimizing your performance. So if you are not doing those things, you guys don't go throwing a pre-workout at it. Okay. For any of my sleep deprived, undernourished, underfed mamas out there, if you just go throwing a pre-workout on top of that, you are just going to be increasing your overall stress levels and running on fumes and stressing your adrenals and, and probably increasing those cortisol levels and then holding on to more of that stubborn body fat. So don't, you can't just throw a pre-workout at it. Okay. Like step away from the C4 you guys. Okay. If that's you get back to basics, start with nutrition, hydration, and adequate recovery and sleep. Okay. Um, but who should and should not use a pre-workout. Let's also address that really quick. So if you do decide to use a pre-workout supplement, it is really important to read the labels carefully and be aware of any potential side effects or interactions that they may have with any medications or health conditions that you have. 
So I would advise consulting like with a, your healthcare professional or like a registered dietitian, someone knowledgeable before starting a new supplement regimen, just to make sure that it aligns with your specific needs and goals. Because, um, you know, especially like any individuals that have pre-existing health conditions or my like pregnant or breastfeeding mamas, um, anyone with sleep disorders or insomnia, people who are sensitive to stimulants, people under 18 years old, all of these populations may want to avoid using them or just consult a healthcare professional first. Um, because again, as I mentioned earlier, they work synergistically with other things that you're taking. So especially who I'm thinking of is, you know, anyone who is taking medications, oftentimes when you introduce a new medication or supplement regimen, then that can affect your uptake of the other medication. So some can make other medications, uh, lag and others can actually increase the uptake of another medication you're taking. So I also think of my ladies with any like hypothyroidism, or if you're on thyroid medications, certain other medications or supplements could actually increase the uptake. So then you might actually need to lower your dose of the other medication that you're taking. So this is where working hand in hand with a healthcare professional is very important when you are introducing new supplements, they work synergistically. So just remember that when you start taking something new. Um, and then let's see what, what should you, what should you look for in a pre-workout? Okay. So, um, because I know that's one of the big questions when people ask about supplements, because there are so many on the market. Um, it's like, and then you don't know what's full of crap or, you know, what's just really good marketing or what, um, and if cheap means it's worse or cheap still has quality, all those questions. So when choosing a pre-workout, um, make sure you look for the information on the dosage and the potency of the active ingredients. Um, the effectiveness of pre-workout supplements varies based on the amount of each ingredient included. So that's where you might see a pre-workout supplement, but it doesn't have, like, it may not have very much of like the important ingredients or like the better ingredients. Right. Um, so I would advise to choose a product that has like the clinically effective dosages and then avoid any that rely on quote unquote proprietary blends. Those will hide the individual, um, ingredient amounts. So that's where, if it says like, it'll say on the label, like proprietary blends. And then you're like, what the heck is in the proprietary blend? Like, I want to know the breakdown of some of those ingredients we listed earlier, I want to know like how much of each is in it, right? So I would avoid uh, brands that have talk about proprietary blends and look for labels that have more um, uh, clarity on the label, transparency on the label. Um, and also what you can do too, this is one big tip when you are looking for what supplements or brands to use is research the reputation and credibility of the brand that's producing the pre-workout supplement. So you want to look for brands that prioritize like quality control, um, that have that transparent, that label transparency, and also have a good track record of producing like safe and effective products. So one easy thing to do, you guys is read customer reviews that's a biggie, like read through some of the reviews from customers and then seek also recommendations from other people that you know and trust that can be really, really helpful when assessing the reputation of a brand. So again, if you guys ever have any questions about specific brands or supplements, feel free to message me. Um, and the, again, just ask around for those recommendations, um, from people who have, you know, used them and know they're, they're tried and true. Um, and again, the caveat there is what works for someone else may not work for you and your specific health conditions. So a couple of drawbacks, we're just going to move right along here. Um, two of the most common drawbacks from using a pre-workout, if you are considering one is one, I mentioned it earlier, large amounts of caffeine. Many pre-workouts are notorious for having a lot of caffeine in one serving, like sometimes 300 milligrams or more. Um, and for some people too much st stimulant in one sitting can actually have, uh, not so nice side effects. Um, the recommended daily allowance for caffeine is like to not exceed 400 milligrams. So you can see how one serving of pre-workout like would put you like well over that threshold. If you were having other caffeinated drinks during the day, like hello, coffee drinkers. Like if you're, if you're having a pre-workout in addition to your espresso or cup of coffee or five cups of coffee, that is a lot of caffeine. So especially if you were someone who is 
drinking other caffeine sources during the day, whether that's tea or coffee or sodas or whatever, I would recommend maybe steering clear of the pre-workouts and making your own, which I'll talk about here in a second, or looking for one that is, um, has less caffeine and, or cutting the dose in half. So doing like a half scoop or something like that. Um, and then another drawback can be with pre-workout. Some people get the quote unquote tingles. Um, and I'm curious, you know, anyone listening, if you've had that feeling or had that effect before, um, it feels basically like a tingly sensation, um, on your skin and like usually starts in your face or your hands, but some people, some people enjoy the tingly feeling that they can get from taking a pre-workout. Others don't really care for, you know, the itchy face feeling so much. And the ingredient that's responsible for the skin sensation is typically beta alanine. So that's the one we referenced earlier, uh, but taking too much beta alanine at one time or so either whether you're taking too much and you've had too much uh, of the beta alanine or if you're using a cheaper brand that can often heighten that tingly itchy feeling. So however, with that being said, it's not harmful and it will subside usually like within 30 to 60 minutes after consuming the beta alanine or the pre-workout, it will usually go away, but it's for some people, it's like really off-putting. So other people love it and they're like, yes, it's working. Uh, So anyway, I guess to each their own and preference there, but just so you guys know, the beta alanine is probably the part of the supplement or the pre-workout that's making that happen. And that's also why I make my own pre-workout up and I, so I can control the dose of the beta alanine. Cause I do use that myself. Anyway, we'll get to that. Um, but for the two reasons that I mentioned above, like that's why I create my own quote unquote pre-workout, um, with like with individual ingredients that are important to me based off some of my goals and what I've experienced with them and how they've helped me during workouts. Um, and that way I have control of the dosages. So my typical pre-workout includes three, three different supplements that I mix together. So the first one is BCAAs. So those are the branch chain amino acids. I choose a caffeinated BCAA for energy during my workout. And then also to have the muscle growth and recovery component. Um, I use a BCAA powder that has like 110 milligrams of caffeine per serving, which is way less stimulant than some of the other pre-workout supplements. It's like about a third of some other pre-workouts. So that way I can control the dose. I can have less caffeine. That way, if I am having other caffeine during the day, I'm not going way over that recommended, um, daily amount. So the BCAAs are great. They do have, um, there is a caffeinated and a uncaffeinated. So if you're someone who's trying to avoid caffeine completely, there are uncaffeinated options, um, for, you know, anyone who's trying to get the energy component and you want the energy and focus and alertness part of the BCAAs, you'll want caffeinated BCAAs. Um, and this is like my little go-go juice in the mornings when I roll out of bed and go, you know, get ready for my workout. I go for a 15 or 20 minute walk before doing my strength training workout. And these little guys help because of the caffeine component in there just to kind of wake me up a little bit. Um, and then the second ingredient I use, so I do a flavored BCAA and then I do an unflavored creatine and creatine. You guys, if you're going to buy any one supplement, this is the one I would recommend. Um, it has been like the most scientifically proven to have benefits. A lot of workout supplements just really don't have much research backed on them, um, or much research around them, but creatine is one of the safest and cheapest and most researched fitness supplements available. Um, and not, not just on the athletic performance side, um, which it can help improve athletic performance, but creatine is also important for a lot of functions in the body. One like sperm count. Um, so important for sperm, eye, eye health, digestive health, skin, brain health. Um, and it can also help reduce mental fatigue and improve memory. So creatine is a fantastic supplement. Um, and one that we oftentimes don't get enough in, um, from our whole foods diet. So this is probably the one that you'll get your most bang for your buck. And it's been like the most researched workout supplement to not only have marked improvements in 
muscle building, but also in cognitive function too. This is actually a supplement that's getting introduced more and more into like elderly populations as well because of the cognitive benefits. So if you're looking for like a one-stop shop for like, where's, where am I going to get the most bang for my buck? Creatine is a great, a great way to go. Um, for most people, like two to five, um, grams of creatine is good. I will say one thing to watch out for, especially for my ladies. Um, and I should, should use other terminology than watch out for, but, um, it can create, cause some water retention, especially initially. So there's, uh, when you're kind of loading onto the creatine, there can be some water retention. So if you're a scale person, which I am not, um, but if you are, and you see an uptick on the scale, don't worry, you're not gaining body fat overnight from taking creatine. It's water retention, most likely, unless if you're overeating and over consuming calories and, uh, food, then you're not gaining fat weight. It's probably just that water retention that's happening. Some women notice it more than others. Um, some notice some initial, little bit of bloating. Um, but I find that that went away relatively easily for me. And I take like the higher dosage of it myself. Um, but also what's really important here too, is like that you're, again, you're doing all the other things, right? Like you're getting daily physical activity, drinking plenty of water. Um, and then also the other nutrients and like proper nutrition in addition to supplementing with this. Um, and again, you guys, if it's something you're considering, talk with a professional, see what's right for you, um, before you just go like throwing things into your diet and into your regimen. Uh, but creatine is the other one. So I do an unflavored creatine to add to my BCAAs because I mix them together. Um, and then also I do the third is beta alanine. So yes, the tingly stuff um, that can improve your muscle endurance. But since I have control of the dosage, I don't get that tingly sensation. Like I've never experienced it actually. Um, so with that, like if you do notice it and you don't like it, just, you can lower the dose a little bit, but the beta alanine I have personally found to help with my muscle endurance during exercise. I feel like I get a little bit more push. And again, if you are someone who is trying to push the limits with progressive overload and, and getting more volume and more reps and more weight, then why not give yourself a little bit of help, right. To do that and like give your muscles and your body the extra bump and energy that it needs. And no, you guys, these are not steroids. These are not made for bodybuilders alone or anything like that. Like this is again, it's just giving your body that fuel basically to help get the most bang out of your workout. So you can find pre-workouts or make your own variation like myself, um, in most like Walmarts or Amazon, other online sites like bodybuilding.com, um, is where I usually go for my supplements or GNC. Um, sorry if you can hear Oreo in the background again, barking at something outside. So there she goes. Um, but it's important to note that the effectiveness and safety of pre-workout supplements can vary and individuals may respond differently to the ingredients. So that is something to do your research like determine which ingredients are important for your goals and consult like a healthcare professional to decide if a pre-workout is right for you. Uh, pre-workout uh, pre-workouts can be a nice, like quote unquote boost, but they're definitely not required for achieving fitness goals. So if you're considering one, it could help, but again, read the labels, know why you're taking it. Um, and then, you know, consult with a healthcare professional if needed. Um, so as always, you guys, I hope this was helpful. I know that was a lot of like word vomit information about this. So if you have any questions regarding a specific supplement, feel free to message me on social media. My handles are in the show notes. And then also feel free to drop your questions in the Fitness Uncharted Facebook group. Um, it's free to join that group. And we do weekly live trainings in there. We do a bunch of fun challenges and giveaways, and we give away a ton of free resources. So if you're not already in the group, head to the link in the show notes and go check that out. So I will see you guys on the next episode.